In this video, you're going to learn how to write linear inequalities in one variable, and we're going to talk about how to solve those and also how to graph them on the number line. We're going to go through three examples, so see if you can practice some of these on your own if you'd like, and let's dive into the first one here. So it says, twice a number is at least five more than the number. So sometimes what I do is I kind of read it through just quickly just to get a feel for what it's talking about, and then I kind of go back and pick out some of the important pieces. So let's start off with this unknown number. We could call it n for number, or a lot of times people just like to use the variable x. So we could say twice a number. So twice means you're multiplying it by two. So we could say like two times our number x, right, is at least five more than the number. Now when you look at this phrase here, at least, a lot of times students will think, hmm, least, that sounds like less than, right? And you might think, okay, let's write that less than symbol. Remember, less than kind of looks like an L, tilted, right? Greater than is the other direction. But let's think about this a little bit more closely, at least. Say, for example, you want to study at least an hour every day. Could you study less than that, like a half hour? No, at least means that it could be one hour or more, right? So it's actually, even though it sounds like less than, at least means that much or greater. So we're going to say greater than or equal to five more than the number. Five more than. That means we're taking the number and we're adding five more to it. So it's five more, it's greater, you know, we're adding five. Okay, so now we have our linear inequality in one variable. We want to solve it. It's just like solving an algebra equation, right, with an equal sign. But we want to get the variables on the left and the numbers on the right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract x from both sides. And you can see 2x minus 1x is x is greater than or equal to, these cancel, 5. Okay, so pretty easy. So as long as our number is greater than or equal to 5, it's going to satisfy uh, this inequality. And we can graph this on the number line. Say, for example, here's 5. Here would be uh, 4, and here would be 6. Okay, so we're going to the right. The numbers are getting larger. X is equal to 5, so that means it's going to be closed circle. If it was greater than or less than but not equal to, we would draw it as an open circle, like hollow or empty. And it, the values are x are greater than 5. Maybe as you go to the right, it's getting larger or greater. Another way students like to think about this sometimes is that if your variable is on the left, you can think of this as an arrow. See how it kind of looks like it's pointing to the right and we're graphing or shading to the right. If it was less than, it would be pointing the other direction like this and we would be shading to the left. That only works though if the variable is on the left. You could also do like a test. You could say, well, let's say if I put 6 in, is 6 greater than or equal to 5? Yes, so that's where I would want to shade. If it was false, then I would want to shade the other direction. Let's take a look at another example. See if you can do this one, number two. It says three times the sum of a number and seven is at most four times the number minus two. So that's quite a bit going on there. So let's kind of read it again and break it down. So three times the sum of a number and seven. Hmm, sum we know means addition. Okay, so some number, x, let's say, and 7, we're going to add those together. So x plus 7, but it says 3 times that sum, see, 3 times that sum, is at most. Okay, now let's look at this phrase, at most. What does at most mean? Say, for example, you only want to watch TV at most 2 hours a day, right? Okay, because you have to study and do other things, right? Could you, could you watch 3 hours of TV? No, right? Because you said at most, that's your upper limit. So you can watch two hours of TV or less, right? Or equal to, because at most is up to that amount, but not greater, right? So we could say this is at most. It sounds like more, which people think is oh, more or greater than, right? But at most means that much or less. So it's actually less than or equal to four times the number minus two. Okay, so the number is x minus two, we know is subtract two. But it's four times, oh, I said that wrong. <laughs> four times the number minus two. Four times the number x, right? So four times the number minus two. Okay, so now we've got our inequality. Let's solve it. So first thing I would do is just like with an algebra equation, we want to simplify the left side and the right side as much as we can. So I'm just multiplying or distributing the three. So 3x plus 21. And then now we want to get the variables on one side and numbers on the other. Ideally, you want the variables on the left and the numbers on the right, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 4x from both sides. And then I'm going to subtract 21 from both sides. Okay, so that comes out to negative 1x is less than or equal to uh, negative 23. 
Well, we just want to solve for one of the variables. So instead of multiplying by negative one, let's divide both sides by negative one. And this is an uh, important distinction between solving equations and inequalities. What happens if you multiply or divide both sides of the inequality by a negative number? That inequality sign will actually flip or change direction. Now, it doesn't matter if there's negative numbers in the problem. It's just if you yourself multiply or divide both sides by a negative. If you add or subtract a negative, it doesn't change it. So in this case, I'm bringing it over here. This is x is going to be flip the sign greater than or equal to 23. Let's go to our number line. Here's 23, here's 24, here's 22, right? So as you go to the right, the numbers are getting bigger. X is greater than or equal to, so equal to 23 or greater going to the right. Now again, you can think of when the variable's on the left, this is kind of like an arrow telling us which direction, direction to graph. Or you could do a test point, you could put 24 in. Is 24 greater than or equal to 23? Yes, that's the right direction. If it was false, you'd shade the other side. Let's take a look at one last example. Okay, see if you can do this third and last example on your own if you're up for it, but we'll go through it together as well. So it says three less than five times a number is less than the difference of five in the number. So there's a lot going on there. So think about that one, try and do this problem. And while you do it, I, I wanna make you aware of my video courses that I have for sale. I have an Algebra 1 video course and I have an Algebra 2 slash College Algebra video course for sale that help you walk through those uh, two different courses step by step, kind of building on the previous concepts and uh, explaining you know, the theory and some examples and have you practice some examples on your own as well. So if you want some help, going through those classes, and you like the way that I explain things, those courses are a great resource uh, for you. But let's go to this problem here now. Three less than five times a number. Okay, so yeah, see how I take it in like little chunks? So I think about, hmm, five times a number. I know, let's say the number is x, five times that would be five x. Now you see how it says three less than that? A lot of students, they like to translate like word by word by word. They see three, they write the number three. They see less than, they think, oh, less than I'm subtracting, minus, right? But if we think about it, three less than five times a number means that we're taking that quantity and we're taking three away from it. That's what makes it three less than or three smaller. It's kind of like if you're three years less than your, your brother, three years younger, right? You would take their age minus three to get your age, right? Now, that quantity is less than, so we know less than, it looks like an L tilted. So this quantity on the left is smaller than, right? The difference, now what does difference mean? That means subtraction of five and the number. So the difference of five and the number. Okay, so now we've got our inequality. Let's go ahead and solve it. Remember, it's just like solving an equation. Variables on one side, numbers on the other. Ideally, you wanna get the variables on the left. If the numbers, uh, if it was, the variable ends up being on the right, let's say if it came out to four is less than x, you would pick it up and flip it over. But notice how this opens to the x. It's still gonna open towards that x. So you wanna make sure you flip the whole thing, okay, even the, the sign. But here, let's go ahead and get the variables on the left by adding x. Let's get the numbers on the right by adding three to both sides. Some people like to draw a line. You can do that if that helps. So 5x plus 1x is 6x. Uh, negative 3 plus 3 is 0. 5 plus 3 is 8x. And negative x cancel out. Okay, so we just want to solve for 1x. We're going to divide both sides by 6. Uh, that comes out to x is less than 4 thirds, which is 1 and 1 third. 1 and 1 third. Okay, so now if we graph this on the number line, Let's just say that this is uh, one. Let's say this is four thirds or one and a third. This is five thirds, which is one and two thirds. This is two thirds, one third. So I'm kind of counting by thirds here, right? So X is less than one and one third, which we said is four thirds. So less than, but not equal to. So it's open or hollow, doesn't include that point. Notice that this arrow is pointing to the left and that works at the variables on the left. Or you can think X is less than or smaller than. And as the numbers get smaller, we're going to the left. And that's the set of solutions right there graphed on our number line. So great job if you're able to follow these three examples. If you want more practice, which I recommend, math is all about practice, right? Follow me over to that video right there that I did and test yourself. Pause the video, try and do some of those problems and see if you're getting them right. I'll see you over in that video.